For thousands of years, mankind has been fascinated by the beauty and mystery of nature and the universe. We persistently pursue truth, knowledge, and understanding, and we fiercely insist that God exists. Our curiosity about the universe seems to be the driving force behind our progress and evolution. Of course, we all know that curiosity killed the cat. Or was that Schrodinger? I guess we'll never know. What I do know is that the universe appears to be a very complicated place. It's especially complicated when you try to look at the math that's involved in figuring it all out. Quantum mechanics, relativity, string theory, loop quantum gravity, magnetohydrodynamics, etc. It boggles the mind, literally. In fact, given the apparent complexities of our universe, it seems almost impossible that it, or we, should exist at all. Today, I'm going to present to you my own GUT, Grand Unified Theory of the Universe. Only my theory suggests that a universe is easy to create, not hard. That the universe and all its elements, if there is such a thing, are created or generated using a very simple set of rules, and that these rules are expressed through a single equation. Z equals Z squared plus C. The current standard model of the universe suggests that the universe, the whole universe, formed around 14 billion years ago in a huge explosion called the Big Bang. It's at that time that all the matter and energy in the universe was created. This graphic is commonly used to describe the creation and evolution of the universe. It starts with quantum fluctuations, which generate a period of inflation. Then there's a dark period, followed by formation of the first stars. Eventually, galaxies with stars and planets begin to form, followed by the accelerated expansion of the universe, which is where we are right now. This is the standard model of the creation of the universe. This is what we're taught, and this is what most cosmologists believe to be true. There's a principle called Occam's razor, you may have heard of it, that relates the complexity of a theory to the correctness of a theory. It goes something like this. The explanation of any phenomenon should make as few assumptions as possible, eliminating those that make no difference to observations and predictions of a theory or hypothesis. In other words, the simplest solution is probably the best and therefore most correct solution. This, I believe, is a good basis with which to begin a theory. Most of the current solutions to our universe rely heavily on a form of math called calculus. Sir Isaac Newton was one of the most influential contributors to the development of calculus. Using this new tool, he was able to develop his laws of motion and gravitation, without which we may never have been able to leave our planet to explore the moon and other planets, as we've so successfully done. Put simply, calculus is about dividing space and time into smaller and smaller intervals so we can make accurate measurements and predictions about our universe. Although calculus is a great tool for making predictions of measurements, sometimes to 10 decimal places or more, it is often hugely complicated, especially when it comes to theories such as Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. The equations that come from these theories are riddled with strange symbols that represent constants, variables, and operators of all kinds. Again, it's hard to imagine how such a complicated universe could ever come into being. And there's a funny here, if you didn't catch that. <laughs> Here's an example of something you'll find when you study quantum mechanics. It's called Schrodinger's equation, and it describes how the quantum state of a physical system changes over time. This is a wave equation, and it works because all matter in the universe has both particle and wave duality. In other words, sometimes matter behaves like a particle.
That's where Newton's equations come in handy. And sometimes it behaves like a wave, in which case we use some sort of wave equation, like the one we have here. Both quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity give rise to extremely complicated math and processes that are difficult for even the most advanced physicists to understand. It's my feeling that the underlying rules that make a universe must be very simple because if it were hard to make a universe, the universe would certainly not exist and we, as a result, wouldn't be here right now. This is where the Occam's razor principle comes into play, where the simplest solution is the preferred solution. Even Richard Feynman, a famous theoretical physicist, once commented, I think I can safely say that nobody understands quantum mechanics. So I had this idea. Instead of trying to find the ultimate equation of the universe, as we've been trying to do for many hundreds of years, my idea was to try and find the equation and or process that generates a universe from scratch. So, let's start with one of the simplest equations that you can write down. Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. Now this equation is quite elegant and easy to understand. In English, it means that energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. It shows that mass can be converted into energy, lots of energy, and that large amounts of energy can generate mass or matter. Simple, right? The equation of the Mandelbrot set is really one of the simplest equations that you can write down. In fact, it's even simpler than Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. You'll also notice in the case of the Mandelbrot set equation that z is on both sides of the equation. What this means is that the output of the equation is being fed back into the equation, thus setting up a positive feedback loop or system. It's this feedback system that gives rise to the endless variety of forms and images that I'll be presenting to you. The Mandelbrot set has been described as the most complex object in mathematics. It's been proven to be the absolute maximum space-filling curve possible in two-plus dimensions. It is said that if its boundary were even one quanta more curved inward on itself, it would have to overlap, thus popping into the third dimension. At this point, I'm going to take a few steps back and describe to you what a fractal is, because the Mandelbrot set is a fractal. And in order to fully understand what the Mandelbrot set is, we must first understand what a fractal is. <laughs> 